The Oral History Metadata Synchronizer, or OMS, an open source tool developed for time coding and viewing indexes and transcriptions of oral histories, is an application that has a low bar for use. It's free, it can be easily implemented on most servers, and the learning curve is very manageable. OMS provides independent and institutional users a scalable resource for enhancing access to oral history, and as such, represents a kind of holy grail for oral historians. The usefulness of OMS, however, extends beyond resources with audio tracks. It can also be applied meaningfully to silent movies to create time-coded annotation that describes a movie's actions and images. Creating time-based description in the absence of an audio track has great potential for opening up what are broadly categorized as home movies, but include documentary and travel films in addition to the more traditional family moving portraits. This article will describe the methodology of crosswalking pre-existing shot lists into ohms as part of the H. Lee Waters digital project at Duke Libraries. First, a bit about Ohms. Ohms was built by a team led by Doug Boyd at the University of Kentucky, using grant funding from IMLS, and released as an open source tool in 2014. Ohms has two primary modules, a synchronizer editor and a viewer. The synchronizer editor is a web-based application, while the viewer is downloaded and installed on the server of the archive or institution using Ohms to provide access to their resources. The web-based synchronizer offers an automated method for applying item-level metadata to the audiovisual resource being described, as well as a tagging tool and a transcription time-coding tool for describing that resource's time-based content. The OMS viewer is reasonably simple to set up using the help tools provided by the OMS project. It reads the OMS XML file, connects it to the audiovisual resource referenced in that file, and delivers the text and resource simultaneously to the user, along with a simple search. Our test case for using Ohms at Duke was the H. Lee Waters Film Collection. H. Lee Waters made movies of local people from 1936 to 1942, traveling to communities around North Carolina and filming people in the streets, at work, and at school and then in partnership with the local theater, charging admission so that those same people could see themselves in the movies. It is among our most high profile and most popular audiovisual collections and is an essential piece of Duke's audiovisual North Carolinianer. In early 2015, the collection went online, 35 hours of video representing 94 reels of film. The potential for using Alms for access to the collection was evident. For although there was nothing to transcribe in these silent films, there was certainly plenty to describe. In fact, Waters' business model as aesthetic meant that the more people and scenes he could pack into a film, the more seats he would fill at the theater. As a document of the Depression in the South, therefore, or reimagined as an archive not of entire films, but rather constituent scenes and even still images, Waters' work takes on a whole new depth. Providing meaningful access to this rich archive means going beyond simply streaming the films under the names of the communities in which they were shot. Drilling down to the scene level became the goal. A key factor in deciding to test ohms on the Waters collection also rested on the existence of shot lists for a portion of the films. These time-coded shot lists, created in Microsoft Word using VHS access tapes a decade ago, had meaningful descriptions of the film's content, even if the time codes and some of the language needed updating. The pressing question became how to get these shot lists into OMS, since the OMS indexing editor relies on a real-time tagging system and does not have a way to batch import pre-existing description. The OMS XML is divided into a header information section, 
which describes the audiovisual item and the series, collection, and repository of which it's a part. An index section, which is the heart of Ohms and contains point in, point out, time-coded metadata fields used by Ohms. And a final section with further item-based description. In order to create the efficiencies we needed to utilize shot lists, we needed to concentrate on the index section. Two methods for crosswalking the pre-existing data into the Ohms index section emerged. The first is based on mail merge functionality common in word processing programs. Microsoft Word can do this natively. Google Docs can do it with a plugin. Using the point in, point out fields employed by the Ohms XML, a merge can be set up to work with the shot lists as the data source, once those shot lists are adapted to spreadsheet form. Shown here is the conversion using common Excel functions of standard timecode to seconds, which is how Ohms timecodes its content. The same functions will work in Google Sheets. Note that we are not using all the possible metadata fields that Ohms provides in its point in, point out index, but rather only the title and the required time point. Adding other fields, however, is as simple as creating further fields in the spreadsheet, which will be merged in the main document. In the main document, in this case a Word document, the merge wizard is used to join the data from the spreadsheet with the Ohms index fields. Once the data is merged, it can be copied into the index portion of the Ohms file, which can then be uploaded into the Ohms viewer. The second method uses the template export function of OpenRefine, the open source version of Google's abandoned Google Refine. Again, it's necessary to adapt the shot list to spreadsheet form with fields reflecting the Ohm's point in, point out XML, and to convert the standard time code to seconds. But once ingested into OpenRefine, that program adapts the fields to the JSON language, and each row or record of data is transformable to Ohm's formatting. We found it easier to keep the row template JSON language in a text file so it could be easily copied and pasted into OpenRefine. This converts the formatting of our data so it's close to being what we need for Ohm's XML. We modify the prefix and suffix and delete the row separator, then export the data and do a find and replace on quote marks and the word null.
An ongoing challenge in describing the Waters films, and an effort made particularly difficult by silent resources, is the development of controlled vocabulary for the scenes being described via ohms. These vocabularies are often project specific, and in the case of the Waters films, need to answer among other things questions about categories of people, such as how and to what extent do we describe race? How do we describe a person's age? And how do we describe a person's activity or its context? While we have only partially realized such vocabularies, their importance to consistent searches by users, such as documentarians, spurs us to do more in this area. We look to basic controlled vocabulary resources, such as Library of Congress and Getty, but also to examples of other programs and projects attempting the same approach, such as the Texas Archive of the Moving Image and its work with describing home movies. Of equal importance to the consistency of description is the amount of description, what constitutes a change in a scene, and how much description should each scene get. For the H. Lee Waters project, we chose to define a scene as the general physical space where Waters was shooting, such as a schoolyard or a main street, and describe within that any substantial changes in activity. We also added a new index point whenever Waters employed one of his beloved special effects, such as a split screen, a mask, or backwards footage. In conclusion, using OMS for enhancing access to the H. Lee Waters project has spurred other projects at Duke to consider using the tool to provide greater description for time-based media. Developing tools independent of the web-based OMS indexer, such as the crosswalks demonstrated here, give project workflows much needed flexibility. Our methodology demonstrates that if one has access to a recording and a spreadsheet, the process of OMS in a resource can begin. With continued improvements to the OMS player and the dedication of the OMS creators in bettering their product, OMS provides a progressively flexible solution that works and allows users to be creative.